All right, Albane, Albane for leather. You guys want to do the shop tour thing, so here we go. There's the front door. Kind of a view of the parking lot, whatever. So we keep a curtain in front of the door to keep the UV out. Walking into an impromptu kind of showroom. Just kind of stuff we do and whatever. It turns into a more like storage than anything else. So this gate, or this door, you, customer doesn't normally just get to stroll on back here, but so then this is the work area, but the first thing they're greeted with is the hospitality area. So they can relax, have a, have a drink or whatever, the fridge, the laundry system, whatever. And uh, the fitting pedestal, that little box with the mirrors on it. And there's my, my big fat butt over there. And they can kick back and control the TV, whatever. So then we have a conference table. It just happens to have a computer on it that just came back from the shop. And we get into the workroom. So down the southern wall, we'll walk over there, is where the machine row starts. Okay. Just like everybody's shop, you start getting piles of crap built up and you know you move them around as you need to. So there's a um a singer, what is this thing? 132k6. That was like one of the original stitchers we bought, you know, back in the day when before the days of Cobra. And then Steve sold me this thing. A 733R4. This thing's a monster. It sews through absolutely anything. But it doesn't sew light very well, so um, you know, it likes heavy stuff. This happens to be the very first sewing machine I ever bought. It's a FOF 1245. I've made thousands and thousands of pants and jackets on this thing. I've had it for 30 years, but you know, I can't part with it. Even though I've got all new equipment, it's just still going to live here because, you know, I bought this thing in 1980 and it served me very well. But now she just kind of collects dust and sits there pretty. But I can't part with her. So right behind this wall, then we start Cobra Island. Oh, well, it's not so much Cobra right now, but there's a cover stitch sewing machine. That's the, the hem you see on your uh, on the bottom of your t-shirt. And then this is a Conso walking foot zigzag machine. Really nice for doing appliques and stuff and a five thread sew overlock. So this thing basically keeps woven fabric from unraveling, like on the inside of your jeans or the jacket linings. And then this little guy, Conso uh, 230, and we use that one for assembling, you know, muslins and stuff for test fitting. And we get back over to the south wall, then the 2918, I had a, a regular Singer 29K, and and it's a little old and obsolete, so we had to move up to the, the fancier new stuff. Hey, look at that. Ironing board out of mom's house. But that's more like an anvil, you know, for laying stuff out. And we don't have a cover on it just because we don't use heat on that thing. But then I recently acquired this um, vacuum ironing table. So this little guy, hold on <laughs> one sec. So this table is really cool in that you turn it on. And the tabletop itself gets hot, okay? Not quite hot enough to resist the occasional scorch, but the table, there's, underneath it, there's a heating element, and that heating element gets hot. And as you're steaming, um, steam gets into the table cover and coincidentally starts getting wetter and wetter and wetter, but the heater helps it evaporate off. And there's this little pedal here. Look here, check it out right there, boom turns on and then a vacuum sucks a bunch of air through the tabletop, expelling out the now evaporating water and it blows it all out and keeps the top fresh. So pretty neat. It's got a little iron that sits on there. The iron kind of gets supplied with a reservoir and then it's plugged into our little hot station. So we turn the whole system off. But this hot station has a little lighting rig right there that when you turn off the power strip, everything goes to sleep and then you don't unintentionally leave the uh, the lights on overnight and keep the iron hot and come to a bunch of ashes afterwards. So that's kind of how that thing works. So here's a, a granite slab for tooling on, but you know, I don't do a lot of tooling, but ultimately it's cool because it transfers heat out of the item that you just ironed right next to it and transfer it into the slab and helps out pretty much. So there's that and then move over and we got ourselves a little burnisher from the lead machine company. And then further south we're moving along and a strap cutter. It's set up right now with 
quarter inch for cutting quarter inch fringe. Pretty neat setup. And then we start working into the kick presses. So for setting snaps and studs and whatever, there's two of those little guys are vacuum operated and then a slightly larger one for hitting the larger stuff. Now this thing's really cute and fun. We just got this one. What it does, it's a button setter. So real quick here, you load the button into the clamp. Got to make sure the eyes are lined up. Stick the workpiece in. Step on the pedal, don't blink. Done. Button sewn on in about a, two or three seconds. That's pretty fun. So just before that, we bought ourselves a keyhole buttonhole machine. And then next to that, a dress shirt style buttonhole machine. And then we're back to the Cobra Land, an MP4 Bell Skyver. And then the infamous Class 14 Splitter. And a typical belt sander. I, mean, I would like to say I do a lot of leather work with it, but you know, more mostly dressing knives and fixing screwdrivers and whatnot. Another kick press, this one's dedicated to the double zero grommet. A little silly arbor press for squashing whatever you want to put in there. I'll mount it on the same table. And then this is a split rivet, uh, basically rivet setter. So that's a pretty, pretty powerful old school machine. And then right next to her, we've got a, a Cobra splitter. And then over to scrap bin land. So up there in the pallet rack is a bunch of scrap bins and a couple um, blind stitch sewing machines for when we do formal wear or whatnot. And now we're, that's the east door. We keep it closed because we got the air conditioning off. <laughs> we want to air condition the room. We open that sucker and let the heat in. Okay, so just like everybody else's place, we got a bunch of crap stored up. We don't know what to do with it, so we can't part with throwing it away. And then the most important tool in the shop, the foosball table. This thing uh, provides some recreation for in-between projects. And this is a, a mess that got left b over before lunch when the guys took off. We got a bunch of patterns and we're cutting them free, getting the extra paper off of them. And then later on this afternoon, it'll be about spray mounting all those paper patterns on the tag board and getting those so that we can use them in leather making. And here's all the cut, all the cut stuff. So we do a rough cut, transfer them down, then spray glue them onto tag board and then we can put them in the storage cabinet which this is pattern central here we got just about any pattern for about anything we would ever want um a trade show booth built in a crate so forklift comes picks it up and hauls it to the convention center a little compressor over here and then hoses and crap basically another collection of junk that starts getting overwhelming cleaning stuff chemical locker and then this is an electronic uh, electrician table but we kind of use it for crap collection so there's a bunch of stuff there project boxes that are not being used right now and then the pencil department pencil and tape and stuff like that a more crap avalanche collecting you know we uh, had to do a little maintenance had to find some screws and really never put them away and there's some tool boxes of junk and then thread storage and that dresser an old dresser out of the house full of random fabric whatever and then small parts rivets and grommets and snaps and whatever the cool uh automatic bobbin winders for a typical singer or the cobra class four there's the class four bobbin winder and then there's the, the old school singer thing so there's that thing and then a couple toolboxes this one you know just full of stuff you know whatever and then a basic uh, craftsman toolbox full of whatever, you know, screwdrivers and die cutting type pliers and the old school, well, somebody put this in the wrong drawer, uh, rotary punches and then scissors up here and then regular pliers and then edgers and what, what like that and then tweezers, grippers of sorts and, you know, oh, well, look at that thing. I have done a moment of tooling in my life but it's not my forte, so I just kind of don't even try to show that stuff on the Artisan Guild. Then this Christmas, uh, my friend uh, hooked me up with a new toolbox, so here's the knife drawer. 
everything kind of has a place, generalize them, then get into the sockets and all that kind of kahui, and then drive punches of practically every size in the flipping world and chisels, whatever, right next to the hand cutting table. So this is for drive punches and whatnot. So they kind of go side by side. And over here, next door, we have a Cobra 26. So it's a cylinder bed machine, but it's designed to, you know, to use 138, 207 thread, lightweight kind of sewing for the industry. And then the to-do list from Doom and the Cobra Class 4. We've got to love this thing. It's probably one of the coolest machines that we own. Right next to the water jug, right next to the microwave and the coffee pot. And a shout out to our energy drink sponsor, Spider Energy. Somebody just happened to leave some cleaning supplies in the energy drink box. And then whatever. So then... Uh, over here in the middle of the room, we kind of got a cutting table that lives on wheels, so we move it around so it goes anywhere we have to have it. And then Cobra Island number two in the middle of the room. So uh, Cobra class 20, this was the prototype before they installed all the, uh, or brought them into the collection. So we beat this thing up and they, they uh, put it into the line then after that. And then one of the first Cobras I got, the 5110, a little rolling foot post machine. You have no idea how cool this machine is until you actually need it. And like when you're going to sew a patch on an elbow or something like that and you kind of don't want to have to take everything apart to get it in there. That thing's the, the tool. And then um, this is a Conso post machine, but it's a walking foot versus the roller. So um, in here we run 138, 207, and the, the 5110 we use it, uh, mostly 69 bonded nylon. And then the machine that gets the most work in the shop is the Cobra Class 18. Um, this thing, you can't beat this machine. Except I've got a little squeak in it. I lubricated everything, and I just can't fi figure out where uh, the squeak is. So people that figure they're frustrated with their sewing equipment, well, welcome to my life. You know, we have all the same kinds of problems, except they work on different magnitudes. So a bunch of little knives we... Had taken out. I don't know why they got piled up on that table over there. And then in the middle of the room, big giant jumbo cutting table. This one's uh, 16 by 8 feet wide, but it's all modular, so it's four, four, four by eight tables basically. So you can see the seam. And yeah, we did covered it in linoleum. I'd like to cover it in, uh, you know, cutting surface, but you know that's another two thousand dollars. So we're waiting on that. And then that's the story. Albane for Leather signing off. Hope you're having a good day. We've got a little mural on the wall. Hope everything's all well and uh, be happy. Thanks. Pay it forward.